How y'all doing? I got a knife here. And this thing, I think, is pretty dang fantastic. Uh, this is from a pretty new company called Mossinary. Um, yeah, we got uh, an M390 blade on this one in particular. You can see this is a rattlesnake design, which um, mostly we've been seeing from uh, Six Leaf uh, recently. But it looks like they're uh, doing stuff... Uh, Elsewise, and uh, yeah, this is a titanium frame lock flipper. And man, I really have to say, this thing is built really, really well. Uh, this company is uh, coming out of the gate with some some great stuff right out the bat here. Uh, this is only a front flipper, but uh, works absolutely great on that. As you saw, you can do that whole reach around thing it's not necessarily the uh the way i prefer to implement or uh, uh deploy uh any of these things but hey it is there uh this thing does have a um a uh, really really fine uh bead blast finish to it and because of that you can kind of yeah you can kind of uh feel that just a little bit but that doesn't stop it from um you know, once you get past that detent, just a little uh, downward wiggle and uh, away it goes. This um, is very, very minimal. Uh, I really do like the, uh, the just the, uh, the sterile kind of look to it. Um, yeah, pretty much mirrored there on the back. We have a nice milling for um, some texture on the, uh, the top and bottom that also kind of add a contour to it. Uh, and I do believe these are designed to uh, put in uh, little tritium vials, if that's uh, kind of uh, something that you might want to do. They're not exactly the easiest things to find. Um, they, they do exist on, uh, you know, you can find them on eBay and stuff like that. Um, and this one does actually remind me of a Tucson, uh, and not one from Rattlesnake. But it's all kind of based on a, uh, a similar pattern. I'm not saying that uh, anyone kind of ripped each other off or anything like that. But yes, we can see that um, this one, as well as the one that I'm uh, referring to, uh, have a blade that's pretty darn close up to the back of the spine. However, this one is completely safe. Um, it has a little bit more of a slot here for just a little bit more airflow and letting uh, little dust particles out and stuff like that. And because this has a 3.2 millimeter blade stock on there, uh, I can't even really, well, I can get to the blade using my fingernail, but uh, I can't touch that at all. It's um, quite safe in that particular fashion there. Uh, the grip works out quite well on it. Um, you know, obviously, uh, even my uh, larger hands, I can still get a... Uh, a full four finger grip on there. It's not going to be one of those knives that hug every little uh, curve and nuance to your hands. This is a very neutral handle. But that being said, it's not uncomfortable to hold at all. Uh, I've been enjoying breaking down boxes and uh, things like that uh, with this guy recently. Uh, I suppose I do wish that uh, it did have, um, you know, internal lock bar relief, but, uh, you know, that's something that I can pretty much end up saying for almost all frame locks. Not all of them, but pretty close to them. <laughs> yeah, the pocket clip works out quite well, has a decent amount of flex. It is titanium milled as well, matches the rest of it in that same finish. And also, um, you know, it mimics the uh, handle there with the uh, the top and bottom uh, being a little bit more contoured in. Uh, if I didn't, yeah, no, I did mention that at the very beginning here. Uh, it has an M390 blade on this guy in particular. And um, while I haven't really done a uh, full cut test on it, I can say, at least anecdotally, when I did the, uh, the reprofile on this down to uh, 15 degrees per side, uh, this took a lot of effort to do that. Maybe not the absolute most difficult one um, that I've dealt with in uh, that particular steel. I think that one probably goes to the uh, the Benchmade bug out here in 20 CV. This one took a hell of a lot of time. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it seems to uh, hold up quite well. So uh, I'm, I'm glad for that. 
the uh, the plunge grind on this thing does a pretty good job. It is uh, almost 90 degrees, just straight down, and then the blade is uh, kind of in front of that, so you have a decent amount of sharpenings there before you really run into uh, anything in particular that uh, might cause you some troubles. But if I go ahead and uh, get a little cutting going on, yeah. I'm not really putting much pressure down on this. I'm just kind of going a little slow. You can zip right through it if you really feel like it. Like I said, this thing has a uh, 3.2 millimeter blade stock thickness on there and uh, really, really, really thin behind the edge, which is great for a lot of EDC tasks. But uh, because of that, I probably wouldn't try to, uh, you know, use the uh, the heel up here to try and pry up paint cans or do anything else that, uh, you know, a knife probably shouldn't be doing in the first place. <laughs> uh, okay, how about if I uh, go ahead and uh, pull out some uh, other knives for some comparisons here. I'll go ahead and do a couple of the Benchmades here. Very, very similar in uh, size and stuff like that to the, uh, the bug out here. Just a touch smaller than the, uh, the standard 940. There we go. There's the uh, Spyderco PM2. Uh, quite a bit larger in the handle there. Makes sense. And there we go. There's the K-Bar Folding Hunter. And because... It amuses me greatly. There's the uh, Kalashnikov 74 from Boker. And... Uh, yeah, in the uh, Desert Warrior uh, colorway going on there. So, yeah, it's uh, it's quite slender. Uh, really fits in the pocket nicely. And um, as I will get to uh, once we kind of take a look on the inside of this thing, which uh, actually looks pretty cool, um, this thing uh, does hit that ounce and inch mark. Uh, we have a 3.35 inch blade or 85.1 millimeters, uh, but we're only coming in at 3.16 ounces, so less than an ounce an inch. Not by much, but hey, it's there, and that's uh, you know something that um, is fairly difficult to pull off, especially in a titanium frame lock like that. Uh, as far as the grams for that, it's 89 and a half grams. So that's pretty darn cool. And fairly thin. It's 0 0.47 of an inch. So uh, a few points um, slimmer than the uh, the paramilitary 2 is. That comes in at 11.9 millimeters if you want to be a little bit more precise as far as that stuff goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this. It also... Um, is really really simple in the construction of it uh we have the pivot here and then we have the uh the pocket clip that also kind of attaches the uh the back handles here so how about if i go ahead and uh see if i can't find where i put my uh screwdrivers here we are uh it is a t6 for the pocket clip though that is uh something that uh, is a little just a little sad, but, uh, yeah, it's not the end of the world here. Uh, we can see it's actually fairly long in there because it does have to reach all the way through there. And the pivot is a T8 in this case. But doing that, uh, it does take just a little bit of, uh, massaging to be able to, uh, open up the, uh, the backside here. Looks like that's spinning basically around, <laughs> so I'll... Well, we'll just go ahead and, uh, and do that like this for the moment here. Uh, yeah, that's that uh, back pin there that uh, actually grabs in quite a bit here. But we can see, yeah, this has a lot of uh, weight relieving going on here. Obviously, you have that shelf uh, on both sides that uh, come together to uh, create that um, back spacer. Uh, so that's nice. Um, and then something that's... Uh, Maybe not absolutely ideal, but I don't really have any problems with it uh, as far as how everything ends up feeling, is uh, this pocket screw goes through the clip, through that side, and then threads into uh, the bottom over here. But uh, this doesn't feel like um, it's a soft material at all. Um, 
And I mean, I look at it and seeing the threads in there, uh, I honestly, I don't think that there's a, a steel sleeve in there, uh, but it almost kind of looks like it the way that that's threaded. But uh, yeah, like I'm saying, we have uh, some nice weight relieving on that side. This side, interestingly enough, we have a whole bunch of information here. So in case uh, the blade didn't give you quite enough, there you go. That's uh, the Mossinari logo right over here. That's Rattlesnake. Again, I don't necessarily know why that was... Well, I guess both of them are on the uh, the outside of the blade there. But we got the standard um, uh, hardened steel insert with the uh, over-travel stop and all that sort of good stuff. And we have ceramic bearings in uh, brass cages. Uh, the de or the uh, the pivot on this is actually kind of interesting. It's um, it's not quite a uh, Chicago screw where uh, this whole thing will come out the back. Um, it's designed where this is kind of a barrel that sits in the middle, and uh, both sides uh, screw into that. Uh, and I will say that uh, it's not exactly my absolute favorite way for something to be done, but. They're not the only ones that do that. Yeah, especially the Manix, but uh, uh, quite a few Spydercos in general do that same kind of construction there. So, you know, it's not, uh, it's not terrible. And we can see we have an uh, internal blade stop pin on this guy here. But what I do like about this being uh, screwed into place is that that, um, that D-shaped pivot... Which, uh, as you can see, there's just a little tiny bit of a notch there for that to uh, line up with it. Um, that's not really going to move on you. So, yeah, super, super easy and simple to uh, pull apart and uh, put back together for any kind of uh, cleaning. Like I said, this back pen here does take just a little bit of finagling to uh, get both sides uh, correctly in there. Let's see if I screwed up the alignment here there we go all right yeah the pivot screw uh does look fairly small on there welcome to uh back of the uh and what is going on with this Something doesn't quite feel like I did it right. No, I mean, that feels perfectly fine. You gonna give me some problems with the threading? I did not expect any of this because I didn't feel it in any of the rest of them. Well, well whatever, okay. Looks like uh, just the uh, the threading on there. It's uh, right in between two um, two of those threads uh, where the uh, the thing actually threads correctly onto that pivot. I don't know if that would be uh, all of them or just this one in particular here. But uh, either way, yeah, just uh, be a little bit careful when you're uh, putting all that back together. But otherwise. Yeah, I got no problems with this thing. It, it seems to uh, live up to the expectations that uh, I at least had for it. So that's good. We have... Uh, I look to be just a little bit off, and that was definitely me. You, you can actually see this uh, little notch here that uh, is a pretty good indicator of where it actually is as far as the centering goes, so I can easily uh, fix that up and... A little bit just uh loosening and then retightening some screws ain't nothing too big about it uh but yeah there's also uh the back part here that you probably saw while it was open that's a hidden lanyard point glad to see there's not just a hole chunked through there in the blade or in the handle at least um yeah i'm really struggling to find almost anything difficult to say about it here uh i do have this thing sharpened up to uh, 
Oh, I measured about uh, 140 on um, on the best tester on this guy. So a pretty spicy blade. Maybe not the absolute sharpest thing I've ever had in the known universe. That was probably 95 that I ended up getting on. Uh, uh, I think it was the Spyderco Native Chief in S30V. That was uh, pretty impressive there. It obviously didn't hold that super keen edge for all that long. I mean, S30V is a, a nice steel, but uh, as far as super steels are concerned, it's uh, it's kind of fallen by the wayside compared to uh, some of the more modern stuff out there. But still, a really good steel overall. Yeah, so uh, I have uh, mentioned this, I think, in the uh, the unboxing video here. Uh, I got this off of uh, AliExpress. Uh, and I could probably find a link or something like that for it. Um, they do have another model out there in my unboxing video. I do have that one. That one's much more budget oriented. You know, a D2 uh, thing with some uh, decent micarta going on on it. So, uh, the other thing that I did want to uh, mention on it is that, um, uh, surprisingly, out of nowhere, I ended up finding that uh, this company does have a... Uh, a little tiny YouTube channel. Um, I think at the time that I found it a few weeks ago, uh, they, they may have had like uh, 20 subscribers or something like that. So I don't know. Uh, if they if they keep putting out some uh, pretty impressive stuff like this, though, uh, I do hope that they uh, find a lot more success in the future. So. Oh, and that knife that I was uh, talking about uh, earlier that uh, reminded me of it, uh, it's this guy here. This is the Tucson TS-67 Shinobi. This is from uh, Caleb Fetchner. Um, and, yeah, as you can see, it, it's a fairly similar slimline um, kind of knife. This one has a, a standard uh, roll-up to it rather than a little bit more robust uh, compound grind to the tip that this one does. But yeah, uh, since I did allude to that earlier and not mention it, there you go. There's, <laughs> that's uh, the one that I have that uh, reminds me the most of it. But yes, uh, anyway, as I said, this is kind of a um, traditional pattern uh, sort of thing. A little bit more uh, Asian influence than, uh, you know, any of uh, the the Western kind of um, patterns. You know, this isn't going to be your, uh, your Stockman or your pen blade or... Uh, <laughs> Texas toothpick or anything like that. Uh, I don't honestly know the name of the pattern, but uh, it, it's fairly common and everything. Uh, but like I said, uh, most of the models that I've seen that are like this, and I've had a couple of them, luckily that Shinobi doesn't have the problem, but some of them, uh, some of the other ones that I have do have that problem of uh, the blade coming up way too high up there. So it's actually kind of dangerous when they're closed. This one gets around that in an elegant way by still having that nice tall blade on there. Otherwise, they would have had to have uh, pulled that back maybe a half a millimeter or uh, possibly up to a full millimeter there. Uh, but instead, they didn't have to do that. Uh, they just have this that uh, does allow just a little bit there. And I guess even if the blade was absolutely flush with that, which it's not, uh, you're still not going to have any problems. Really happy with this thing, yeah. All right, I will, um, I'll shut up about it now. Like I said, I'll leave a link down below to uh, these guys' YouTube channel. Uh, for the most part, it's just been a, a few uh, videos here and there of uh, them kind of uh, showing that uh, out in the open. Uh, I do believe that they are uh, probably Chinese in origin, so there's not a whole lot of uh, words that are happening in the videos because. They don't necessarily uh, speak English all that well, as far as I'm aware, at least. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you uh, are interested in these guys and uh, checking out, uh, I don't know, anything that they have to offer, that would probably be a good place to start. So, all right, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. And subscribe.